so I'm just sitting here by the pool and I am typing on this paper here. So basically, um, what I find when I sort of looking over uh, that what has to do with like Sweden in, in the context of religion and like beliefs and everything, you know, in this more post, uh, not only post-colonial era, but also the globalization and, uh, you know, after this whole secularization process and everything, I mean, that one has sort of passed. But in this more post-materialistic uh, era as well, you know, it's quite paradoxal because you would consider that religion is sort of dislining, which it is, you know, the more organized type of uh, religions, but it's actually uh, highlighting the fact that, you know, uh, in the post-materialistic era, you know, uh, which uh, Sweden is sort of, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the bird, by the way. So, yeah, which Sweden is within, um, people are sort of valuing other things than materialistic uh, items, because since the sort of materialistic uh, welfare has increased with time, and it still is, people are actually not really placing so much value on these more materialistic type of things, you know. Uh, it has been shown that uh, people, you know, who are living on the worst financial conditions, they are sort of highlighting this uh, importance of uh, materialistic uh, uh, gains and stuff, you know. Uh, so in Sweden what happens is that people are valuing these things that has to do with, um, you know, self-realization and uh, self, like to have the form of uh, uh, right, the individual right is almost sacralized. Uh, it's almost, almost becoming like a form of uh, religion in itself, and uh, and that's quite interesting because what happens is that a lot of uh, middle-income, university, university-educated women in Sweden they are like taking up some form of religious activities, you know. But it's not religion in that sense that it is an organized form of, of structure and stuff. It's actually, it's a form of consumerism, you know, because you, you're picking and choosing religious activities from different forms of, uh, you know, structured religions and uh, traditions and stuff, and consuming them in accordance to whatever <clears throat> the specific individual finds uh, is, uh, you know, relevant and uh, bringing some form of uh, euphoric and, uh, you know, personal gain. It, uh, it ha sort of has lost its uh, purpose of, uh, you know, uh, you know, praise, praise some form of higher power or God, you know. It has sort of moved into this, um, this way of uh, be about consumerism and I think a lot of people don't understand this, you know, that uh, you know, the way that they are picking and choosing is a form of consumeristic uh, behavior, you know, and it is connected to the capitalistic uh, uh, way of sort of, uh, you know, highlighting this form of uh, consumeristic uh, type of um, free time uh, that is uh, beyond the actual working uh, hours and stuff, you know. So, yeah, and also one of the interesting things is that in comparison to the UK, there is uh, in UK a more higher tendency to have some form of, uh, you know, like inner form of uh, spiritual uh, belief system, which is privatized. It's not, uh, you know, in the public space, obviously. But in comparison, Sweden has this form of, you know, membership thing that people are paying, you know to be part of uh, different religious uh, uh, associations and organizations, you know. But they don't have the belief, you know. So they lack the belief, but they maintain a form of uh, uh, membership. And the membership is actually associated to, it's associated to the, uh, to the fact that it holds a form of uh, uh, national identity that is related to the religion 
that has been in the past, you know, so Christianity in this case. But in other words, uh, Sweden is a very post-Christian uh, form of society. It is very, um, you know, characterized by individualism and, uh, uh, you know, consumerism and all these post post <laughs> phenomena or concepts, you know. Um, that is kind of interesting in this uh, in relation to migration and uh, as well to globalization because globalization itself is just homogenizing, you know, it makes the uh, culture homogen and, um, you know, it also moves the capitalistic modern type of financial system uh, to more, you know, uh, uh, wider kind of uh, geographic areas, you know which means that it will be more exploitation and so forth of natural resources and more gain for those who are at the top uh, uh, and have like these uh, capitalistic uh, form of power position so it would be some form of uh, transnational company and so forth multinational company actually uh, but with migration you know it's uh, like uh, what happens is that some of these former colonial, colonial forms of state uh, population is uh, migrating, you know, to northern places and uh, bringing with some more uh, structural, structural and uh, organized form of religion. Uh, but with a few generations down the line, they sort of losing this connection to their. Um, uh, religious affiliation, you know, that has a connection to a form of structured and like structured religion, and they sort of adapting the forms of uh, consumeristic uh, behavior and also this uh, concept of individualism and so forth. So, and this is like calculated, you know, in the in the order, you know. So that's why many of the minority minority forms of uh, uh, religious institutions and uh, so forth uh, they sort of is facili facilitating uh, migrants to um, be, become integrated into the society and sort of adapt into these uh, individualistic and uh, consumeristic forms of behaviors and then uh, then they abandoning the original religion in order to sort of have more of a form of consumeristic uh, religious behavior so and I'm assuming that most <laughs> migrants they unless they have uh, sort of you know understood this they they are not aware of their own behavior in this sense you know so but it's a very interesting topic because it sort of is highlighting what happens when uh, people are you know migrating to different areas and uh, you know what happens with the religions you know as we know them and also the religion itself as a concept you know it is a kind of a new type of um, uh, concept that has been conceptualized in the European context before a couple of uh, hundred years ago there was no concept you know uh, of religion itself it was more like fluid and it was more integrated in the society context and uh, often it had more or less a connection to the national uh, identity and also nations themselves are not either like a long uh, it's, it hasn't been around for that long you know but like to different forms of geographical areas and population and so on, you know but it was more fluid you know uh, but the fact that there has been a definite definition of concept you know that is referring to these phenomena, you know, it also is sort of separating religion from the society context, you know, and sort of placing uh, religion in its own category, and then you have the state here, have the nation, and then the religion, you know. So you're making these category categories for it, which also makes it easier to, you know, move things uh, the way that. Um, is desirable, you know, in a sense. 
depending on you know depending on what the, what might be desired but uh, let's say in Sweden so in Sweden the concept is to sort of bring in this more um, epistem that is resting you know like bring in institutions and stuff that are formed on an epistem of knowledge that is not stretching within the sort of uh, any form of religion but is totally sort of disconnected from it and uh, I mean each knowledge set of knowledge and like field and stuff it has its organ in some form of um, paradigm and these paradigms are not either solid I mean you have to most scientists and stuff not questioning the methods that are used within each of these paradigms but I mean I don't know how I'm going to do because um, I find that it's kind of contradictory you know like that you are doing this form of research and yet you have uh, like a disconnection to to the critis criticizing the methods that are used within a paradigm and a certain uh, field of knowledge you know that you just are um, adapting the methods and you're going about and doing the research and you reach a certain uh, result because of the methods that you have applied but I mean um, so yeah and there is not either like within each of these different paradigms of uh, knowledges and like sciences you know there is not like one is better than the other it's just that it's a different way of approach things uh, but the methods themselves is not sure they are not going to lead to the true <laughs> nature or whatever you're trying to study you know so the problem is like how to question the methods that are used because if you f if one method is failing then it means that the whole scientific field is also like that specific scientific field is also sort of you know shaken you know by that and uh, I mean, it happens sometimes that they sort of, you know, getting, <laughs> getting out of the, the paradigm and sort of, uh, you know, shaping something new, depending on whatever they come up with. But also each of these theories and like conclusions and stuff, to actually be put into place, they need to be very elegant, very simple, very basic you know they must be simple and elegant you know otherwise most theories and stuff are not implemented if they are too complicated you know because as you can understand like any person who's going to do uh, you know to learn a certain field if the theories themselves are too complicated uh, it would require too much time to actually learn the methods you know in order to be able to operate within a certain field you know so so that's also kind of interesting and that's why many of these you know very naturalistic uh, scientific uh, methods and stuff or like just theories and stuff they are very simple uh, but it is in order you know to sort of have something that is not too complicated it doesn't mean that it's more true than anything that would have been a more complicated theory you know but it makes it easy to un to explain certain things you know so Let's see if I have anything else here. Um, I think that's like what I <laughs> so we're going over now. But this paper is almost done. I just have to, you know, continue slightly uh, on some of the parts of it. But because um, I have a couple of lectures, I think I have ten lectures yet uh, like ahead not now in January but uh, in uh, like from February sometime I have 10 lectures uh, continue like for this but uh, I think I don't uh, I don't have to uh, yeah. it's not going to be anything that I haven't already read in these papers or books or whatever you know so